it's the usual thing I'm deciding where to site the trap back at Gamston Wood for the first time in a couple of weeks I'm going to trap in the same place as where I did those few weeks ago it was a relatively poor session and the last three trapping sessions that I've done on the last three consecutive nights have all been poor as well and last night especially was dire relatively at best gravel pits so I want to see what it's like here at Gamston Wood hopefully I won't be infested with hornets but I do have several catch cups I'm sure the worst to come to it but I've just got to decide where to site I've got that northerly or northeasterly breeze which you can probably hear in the trees and I think somewhere behind me just over there is the place to site the trap it'd be nice if we get a few moths tonight Well, after spending five minutes here just sort of weighing up the the lie of the wind, so to speak, I've decided that it's probably best to go in exactly the same spot as when I came here a few weeks ago. That seems the calmest spot. You can hear the wind blowing through the taller trees. So hopefully we'll at least get a breezeless evening. Whether we get many moths is another question. Well, just started the generator and the light is brightening and it's 19.30 or half past seven in old money. I have a sneaky feeling I'm going to be inundated with hornets because I was just getting something out of the boot and a hornet flew into me. I think that might be a sign of things to come. But if I want to trap in woodland like this, hornets or something that I'm going to have to put up with, especially in fairly large numbers. But we'll see. I may well be pleasantly surprised, but Dillis and I once, a number of years ago, about 50 yards or so around the corner from here, did exactly the same thing. We'd set up and within five minutes we'd got over a dozen hornets and more were coming in so we were clearly very close to a nest and there's a good chance that I'm going to be close to another nest but we'll see well a quiet but decent start certainly decent compared to the last two sessions at Best Orp and Miss and Carr I've just had the six moths in but they include two Bactra lanceolana which is a moth that to be honest quite rare that I record during a night session like this most often find that during the day Ecrim Meadows always used to be good for Bactra lanceolana and no surprise really that they are in because I'm surrounded in this open part of Gamston Wood by lots of sedges and that's what the larva feed on so that's not really a surprise and maybe some more will come in and then four micro moths in they include the Brimstone, which was the first of the macros to come in and a single red green carpet which is nice to see not sure whether I've trapped red green carpet this year may well have done early in the year somewhere like Loud Wood where females have overwintered and another brimstone has just dropped in and the only other species it's two common marbled carpets so nice to actually get geometry there or carpet moths coming into the light something else is just coming in and something else is coming in this is getting promising look what's flapping around the light I've heard a thud and I'm not surprised at this hopefully it'll come round but we have another Clifton non parade it's just on here wow 
I'll tell you why I'm not surprised because gamson wood is good for the food plant of this huge moth and of course it's gone now let's hunt it out well it's settled down nicely what a huge moth I feel so privileged to be able to have trapped a second and a third now four technically because I had one at home which didn't come down to the light and from experience these come down to light better and more often than red underwings do they really are a huge moth It's almost like an equilateral triangle and each of those three sides measures a good three inches so you can get an idea of just how big these moths are what a thing and there is plenty of aspen here which is why I'm not surprised because I think these have been breeding in Nottinghamshire at least two three years more and more records coming in all the time and this is a new site for the moth in Nottinghamshire nice that it's settled down as it has well as quick as that Clifton number A dropped in it's gone there's a second Clifton non pare It's done exactly what the first one did. Landed at five, ten metres away. Look at that. Hard to believe. They are absolutely enormous moths. Twenty fifty. You probably gathered by now that this is a better trapping session than the last three you put together. It does help when a big county rarity still and a big moth comes in. Two Clifton non pareil and the second one that came in still sat on the box I'm letting it hopefully settle down and not be interrupted it's less inclined to be interrupted if it's on the side of the box by an ever-increasing number of crane flies crane flies are a bit of a nuisance at times especially when you try to film something and using the light Lifter non has now woke up and is now charging around. <laughs> oh, 
it's off. Oh no, it's back. The great thing about trapping like this for me is that such moths just can come and go. I would like to get some more footage. I just hope it settles down, but anyway, Clifton non pareil aside, and I never thought I'd be saying that on a trapping session video, but it, of course, is a decent night, and I think more are going to come in. I won't be surprised at a further Clifton non pareil either, but the species that's come in, just the Bactria lanceolana, is the only micro that is in and still only two of them but a typical fair large yellow underwing two barred sallow now neither of which has hung around uh, broad bordered yellow underwing which I think is only my third record this year funny because broad bordered yellow underwing like yellow underwing they often hatch out a lot earlier than they appear and they go into almost like a torpor for several weeks and then September they come back out and become active again and one is still knocking around somewhere so that's nice to see and turnip moth, a very dark turnip moth has come in and another brimstone is just wheeling its way in here they look like micros compared to the old Clifton which without a doubt is going to steal tonight's show well here's almost the eat well, a bigger surprise than Clifton non parade because the upper moth of the two the lower one is a red green carpet but the upper one is the dark form of box moth it just shows that these moths really do move around because I can assure you there is no box within two three miles or so of the middle of Gamston water here I didn't actually see this come in, I've just looked on the side of the box and there it settled. And the dark form is absolutely beautiful. I think that the the normal form, the white form with the dark band all around the wings, I think that is a beautiful moth. But when you look at these, and I'll put photos in, it is truly astonishing. It may look just brown, but get it in the right light and it's very similar to mother of pearl because it shows those sort of pearl essences so to speak those sort of purple sheens and reddish sheens it is a beautiful moth here to stay no matter what people think and wish but for this to turn up here i'm quite astounded at i mean i had it at Lound Wood at Egrin, and that's within sight of Egrin. There are obviously a number of box hedges and box bushes in Egrin, but it's still a good half a mile away. But it's more here for this. I am very, very surprised that this has turned up in the middle of Gamston Wood. We are a good two miles or so as the box moth flies from the nearest source of box tree hedging. What an astonishing session. Well here's that red green carpet. It might not but might not look very red and green but it really is a very attractive moth. It's a moth that flies in the autumn. Well at least both sexes fly in the autumn. The males die after mating with the females and it's only the females that over winter and will reappear again sometimes turning up at MV light in the early spring but a very nice moth quite variable some specimens are completely green and others like this are green but do show that pinkish coloration and that's a Myrmica ruginodis which is half-heartedly having a look and it's about to go so that's red green carpet a moth that is just starting to appear on the wing now and a very attractive moth too and the ant's quite nice
10 o'clock and we're in one of those periods where it's gone as still as anything and then other times that breeze can get up and be quite strong I can even feel it down here I mean throughout this session it's mostly been through the tops of the trees thank goodness but it, it's really nice when it drops as still like this it's still 16 centigrade so the temperature's not budged since start up and we've got a decent list on about 20 species at the moment have had sallow in straw dot garden carpet now there's a species one of those moths that i rarely see out of the confines of my own garden but nice to see here in the middle of the gamston wood and in terms of the micros hypatima rhomboidella shows its face again and bramble shoe moth that seems quite a, a late date but I wouldn't be surprised if one or two species are putting in partial second broods so things are going very nicely as what looks to be common wainscot just drops in and that's a new one for this evening but I'm going to give it till at least the three hour mark is up which means another half an hour but I think they may well be stopping longer this evening it has promise and as we've seen has already promised well there's a nice little selection starting off with the the big one which has just been flapping about something disturbed it Clifton Nonpareil bottom right hand corner of the box then at 11 o'clock from that is that same red green carpet and to the left of the red green carpet a very nice light emerald a nice little trio of moths but what a fabulous thing Clifton Nonpare is There's a very good reason why people want to catch one of these and you'll find out that reason when you trap one Super Moth and to think of its changes as it's going to be walked on by a brimstone you see how big Clifton non is compared to the diminutive form of the brimstone but as I say when you catch a Clifton non you'll know exactly what all the fuss is about such a huge rarity and we're starting warm up so it's going to be off soon as another one has just landed at the side of me smaller than this one I'm hoping that it comes in the same shot and this is the the second one of the two that's just been in three all together three Clifton non -pare. but what a moth if you want a large moth this has size if you want beauty this has beauty and a quite unique hind wing We have so many moths showing such beautiful colours. Nothing else springs to mind with blue in it. Or the, the what this moth often used to be referred to as the blue underwing. What a fabulous thing. Well, we've just gone 11 o'clock. 
hours, that makes three and a half hours. Where that three and a half hours has gone, I have absolutely no idea. But there again, when you're playing with three Clifton non pareil time flies. I wonder how common it will become multiple counts of Clifton non pareil I think it'll be fairly usual here in this particular wood over the next few years. And I'm planning on staying till at least half past 11, which will make four hours. All of a sudden there's lots of little midges appeared at the light. It's still 16 centigrade, that temperature hasn't changed. But if something comes in, in half an hour between now and half past 11, I may well stop a little bit longer on the basis that I have to make the most of this opportunity really but I'm still not going to trap all night and I need to make the most of it because I know that after tomorrow the nights and the temperature drops the moths are steadily coming in but all of a sudden lots of little tiny flies have appeared So I think it's time for a cup of tea, in the absence of anything stronger of course. Well there's just been a few spots of rain so I think we'll be calling it a night. It's about quarter past eleven now. By the time I've packed things away it'll be half past but I don't all of a sudden want to be having to rush around getting stuff packed away so what a session it's been one Clifton non still knocking around the light a few moths coming in but it looks like half eleven it'll be well I think it's time to pack up. There's just been a few spots of rain and it's starting to come again so I don't want to be packing up in torrential rain so time to go.